Hello and welcome to week six of the AFCB TV preview show. Once again, I'm joined by our match day commentator, Chris Temple, and it's been a busy week here at Vitality Stadium. Coming up on this week's show, we look back at last weekend's 40 win over Leicester City. We'll also discuss the under 21's Hampshire Senior Cup victory on Tuesday night. And finally, we'll be previewing the weekend's game against Burnley, as well as next week's game against Blackburn Rovers. But first, there's just one place to start, and that's with last weekend's 40 win over Leicester City. Let's take a look at the short highlights. Gosling forward to Joshua King. King skips away from Chilwell, brings it down well. He's got support from Fraser. If he can find him, he can find Fraser. Fraser to the edge of the box. Right footed from Ryan Fraser and into the bottom corner. Bournemouth take the lead against Leicester inside the opening 20 minutes. They've been up against it at times in this match, but they've just turned Leicester around. And Ryan Fraser on the score sheet again for Bournemouth. The Cherries won, Leicester nil. Well, talk about counter-attacking football and Leicester and how they do it. That is how to counter it up. From the keeper into Gosling, he sets Kingy on his way. Fantastic switch of pass. Fraser still had plenty to do. He still had a fullback and a centre half in front of him. In this first half, not had his shooting boots on though as Bournemouth come forward. Callum Wilson forward to Ryan Fraser, driving in on goal. Ryan Fraser doubles Bournemouth lead. Again, it's brilliant play from the Cherries. From back to front, they turn Leicester around. And again, it's the wee man who provides the finish. Just under 10 minutes until half time. It's Bournemouth 2, Leicester 0. Well, they've only gone and done it again. Started from the keeper out to the, the centre half, out to the left back. Then when Fraser does get on the ball, he's still got plenty to do. But I think he just rolls it through Schmeichel's legs. How cheeky is that? Who have been best at that so far? King to the byline for the Cherries. Crosses charged down by Ndidi. Back to King. Penalty to Bournemouth. Joshua King sends Kasper Schmeichel the wrong way. Bournemouth are flying at the Vitality Stadium. 41 minutes gone. Bournemouth three, Leicester nil. Well, an excellent penalty. We needed him to keep his head. Almost to the byline, one step over. Now to the byline, left footed cross. Back towards Adam Smith, who side foots it past Kasper Schmeichel. Ryan Fraser from goal scorer to provider for the Cherries. And a beautiful finish with the instep from Adam Smith. Ruthless stuff at the Vitality Stadium. It is Bournemouth 4, 10 man less than nil. Well, that's, that's down to just fantastic passing ability all the way down the left side to cut the ball back. It was perfectly there. Fraser again chops it back. Come back to that in a moment. Here's Ricardo for Leicester, edge of the box. Good defending from Diego Rico at the first attempt. Then brings down Ricardo at the second. Penalty, says referee Craig Pawson. Again in front of the south stand. No. Sends Begovic the wrong way, does Madison. There's a consolation for Leicester at the end of this game. It's Bournemouth 4, Leicester 1 in towards Albrighton, heads it past Asmir Begovic, Leicester have a second, we've got a minute of normal time plus any stoppage time to go, surely the comeback's not on for the Foxes, it's Bournemouth 4, Leicester 2. The Cherries team to come, and there is the full-time whistle, it's another win for Bournemouth, a fourth of the season in the Premier League. It's been a great start to the new campaign. 4-2 winners over Leicester. Well, there we go. A brace from Ryan Fraser helped the Cherries to a 4-2 win over Leicester City. You can watch the full 90 minutes on AFCB TV for free. 
well, Chris, a really encouraging performance here at home last last week. What a game. I mean, what a performance. I have to say, I wasn't here, as I said on the uh, the preview show last week. I unfortunately missed the game. But when I looked at the score, at whatever, half an hour in, and it was 3-0, uh, I was thinking, oh, once again, I've managed to miss a cracker. Um, but just watching the uh, the full 90 highlights over the uh, the course of the last few days, um, yeah, I mean, just it's what a ruthless performance. I mean, for a team that are packed with you know international quality, you know, we, everyone talks about Harry Maguire as, you know, one of England's most uh, sort of standout players in recent times and one of the emerging sort of uh, stars of the World Cup, if you like. I mean, he was made to look absolutely bang average. I mean, they absolutely ran rings around Maguire, Wes Morgan. We've spoken about Ryan Fraser and his confidence so many times, but uh, I mean, he was almost unplayable. Um, knowing what Eddie's like, you know, he'll be slightly frustrated at the, the two goals that went in at the end, which took a bit of a, a, a 1% of the gloss off the scoreline. But no, to, to, to dispatch a team like Leicester, the way they did it just shows what a what a confident team Eddie's got out there at the moment and of course before the game we talked about five draws out of six previously in the Premier League between between the two sides and last week there was only one winner yeah you could have been forgiven for the good it was two completely different teams that from those two that had contested all those previous games um you know I'm not sure Leicester knew what hit them it was a bit of a, a bit of a whirlwind as far as they're concerned but you know it just shows you when everything clicks Bournemouth have got some some frighteningly good players um attacking wise we talk about the counter attacks and the pace and the power they've got um all around that attacking sort of four or five really um um, and they're all contributing. That's that's the key as well. Callum Wilson, you know, he scored in the first couple of games. He's con been contributing assists since then. The wee man has been contributing assists and goals. You know, match of the day, are spotlighting him now, talking about how how far up the rankings he is in every single asset of his game. So, um, yeah, at the minute it's uh, the, the attacking the attacking sort of quartet, if you like, is is really firing. And obviously that's got to be backed up at the other end as well by uh, by some. And yeah, there was a couple of moments Leicester had early on, when maybe when the game was nil nil, which if they'd have gone in, um, could have been a different afternoon. But got to take your chances Bournemouth did Leicester didn't and of course how much confidence will that give to the side now going into this weekend yeah, it just adds to the confidence they've built up I think you know yes Chelsea of course away was uh, disappointing but that was maybe to be expected given how Chelsea had started but I think now because those Bournemouth and Leicester we talked about as being two teams very comparable on paper possibly with the same sort of aspirations as to where they want to finish in the table uh, so for Bournemouth to come out so so clearly on top of, of that just shows you the, the level of belief that in the team at the moment. And I just think the, the players that Bournemouth have got, they're just 10% at least better players when they're confident. I, I think any player is probably, but certainly, you know, without wishing to feel like a stuck record, Ryan Fraser, when he's believing in himself, when he's got a smile on his face, as I think the players in the dressing room will tell you, when he's, when he's sort of as a happy character, that's when his best football comes out. And he, at the moment, is yep, catching eyes all over the league. Well, before we go any further, let's take a little look at last week's tunnel cam when Leicester City players were about to emerge for the second half. The third one, it can only be on board with deliberate That's what I mean. What, I don't know what, what, it's from one yard. What he's supposed to do. Well, there we go. Leicester City players at half time last weekend. Chris, some interesting comments. What did you make of them? I think it's a fascinating feature of the tunnel cam. You look at it every week and, you know, often it's players standing in a line and you pick up one or two things. But in situations like that, that's a, that's a real insight um, into... And the fact they managed to talk about it without losing any foul language as well was pretty uh, pretty surprising. But, yeah, it just shows you the fact that their belief that how, you know, how we 3 nil down here. But it, it was down to ruthlessness. You heard them say it there. They've been ruthless. Uh, and it simply was, you know. Um, it's something that can be levelled against Bournemouth in the past. They haven't been ruthless enough. Um, they've had chances. The final third, the final ball, shooting from the wrong positions, um, wasting good opportunities. But at the minute, that that cutting edge is firing. Um, I'd love to see I'd love to see Callum get a goal because strikers are judged on goals. So I'd love to see him get almost get back to scoring ways. It's only been three games since he scored, but but for what he's contributing to the team, I know that strikers are often judged by the goals column. So I'd love to see him get a goal this weekend to, as a reward for that. But yeah, fascinating fascinating to see the Leicester the Leicester players sort of rubbing their eyes, going, "What's happening here?" And one player that scored a brace last weekend was Ryan Fraser. Once again, another brilliant performance. He's he's a top scorer this season. Yeah, and I'm sure the other strikers are looking to to catch him up. I know Callum, I spoke to Callum Wilson this week for our our player interview, and he's uh, saying he, he's laid on a couple of assists for Ryan Fraser, so he's looking for that compliment to be returned. Um, but I think you know 
the good thing about Ryan Fraser is we, we see him out on the left, which is where he sort of made the position his own. We also see him coming in central. You know, he's cutting onto that right foot, that finish last week inside the far post. So he's popping up in central areas as well, which is, I guess it, it takes a bit of heat off Callum as the sort of focal point of the attack. It gives Bournemouth you know, different options, Joshua King as well. They all interchange up front. So it's great to see every player in the sort of attacking line contributing with assists and goals because you can put too much of any of those on one person. As soon as they have a bit of a bad trot, the service dries up or the goals dry up. So the fact they're sort of rotating people like Junior Stanislas back in the fray now as well. So, yeah, it's uh, the, the con contributions of, of all sorts, goals and assists, is, is really encouraging, yeah. Well, of course, there were four goals last weekend, but there were also eight seen here on Tuesday night as the under-21s progressed in the Hampshire Senior Cup. Let's take a look at the short highlights. Vincent, what do you want to? Means he's in, squares! He's in! Modern day fullback, athletic. As Dobre and Sanislas combine. On Pew, surely two. It's there. Easy for the Cherries. Really good play from Sanislas and Dobre. Reverse pass for Pew. Sanislas beyond him. Sanislas in the area. What a finish from Junior Sanislas. He's back with a bang. Again, it's lovely interplay on the edge of the box. Great ball through. O'Connell drills one into Pew. Gets out of his feet for Dobre. Surely 4 0. It is. Really good finish. Clinical stuff from the Cherries. Great touch from Mark Pew out of his feet in the area. And Dobre did the rest. Really good low finish. They're appealing for offside, but it's not given. Stanislas, Dobre, took back, penalty. Again, incisive play, and now who's going to take it? Pewey's giving it to Alex Dobre. It could be a chance for him to score a hat trick here at Vitality Stadium. Looked a clear penalty from up here, tugged back by the defender. And Dobre now has a chance for a match ball in the Hampshire Senior Cup. Dobre against Flitney. Dobre saved by Flitney. It's a really good save in all fairness. Got down low to his right. Vincent dummies. It looks a blast one. Curls one. Great strike. He's pleased with that one. It's a really good move. The game a bit too much time on the edge of the box. And Vincent did the rest. Curling a beautiful effort in the bottom left-hand corner. Waterfield in shooting range, he thought about it. Been driven wide by Simpson and O'Connell, but he smashes one! And there's nothing Travis can do. It's a brilliant strike from the substitute, Lewis Waterfield. Surely nothing more than the consolation. We all know about Mark Pugh. Oh, it's in! And Vincent has a second. The Cherry's now six and Vincent has a brace. Seaman cuts in field. Lots of touches of the ball. What a pass that is for Pew! Great goal! Really good pass from Charlie Seaman. Deceives the easily back line. And Mark Pew slams one through Flitney's legs. His second of the night. And AFC Bournemouth have a seventh in this Hampshire Senior Cup tie. Dobre. Infield, he can play Pew in. Pew, what a touch that is for O'Connell. He's in on the keeper, great finish. It's all about that touch from Mark Pew. Inch perfect pass for O'Connell, and he's deserved a goal tonight. The Cherries are rampant. Well, there we go, an 8-1 win for the under 21s on Tuesday night, so we'll then progress in the Hampshire Senior Cup. You can watch the full highlights on AFCB TV for free. Well, Chris, one player that did feature on Tuesday night was, of course, Junior Stanislas, his first minute since March. Great to see him back. Yeah, gradual process. Um, as for this weekend, uh, I, I think it's probably too soon. He might well be on the bench, but Tuesday night's looking like a perfect opportunity. I guess a bit like when Rico and Lerma were suddenly available, a League Cup game came along to help them sort of move forward in their, their efforts to get match fit. So for Junior, I think Blackburn on Tuesday night here is going to be a, a perfect chance to get himself back in the fray. I mean, people forget how long he's been out. He's been out a long time, you know, the best part of, what, six, seven months since March. So for him to be now back, is, I don't think they want to rush him in.
they don't need to rush him in, really. The way the team's playing, it's not like you're, you know, you haven't scored a goal and it's your main number nine and you're trying to rush him back into the team to, to provide some goals. I think the, the amount of options they've got out wide, you think of people like Mark Pugh who, who can't get near the 18 at the moment on a match day. So but we know what Junior adds. He adds all sorts, you know, two feet, set pieces, just the ability to unlock defences. Um, he's going to be a great asset to have back in the team. But, yeah, I think Eddie will be very conscious not to not to rush him because he has had injury problems before. We know his, his injury history and we've spoken about what a good player, an even better player he probably could have been given a run of, you know, injury-free sort of seasons, if you like. I think he's had problems in most seasons, unfortunately. So, yeah, but brilliant to see him on the score sheet, of course. Um, great to see the likes of Mark Pugh and Tyro Mings getting some game time as well because... Again, it, Premier League players, it's the Hampshire Senior Cup. I mean, Mark Pugh hasn't, well, he has been injured. Tyrone Mings hasn't been injured. It's good to see them wanting to get out there and get in some minutes. So, a shame for, I guess a bit of a shame for Eastley's uh, youngsters that they got a bit of a pasting, but from Bournemouth's point of view, encouraging. And, of course, some of those players will play on Tuesday night again. So, yeah, really good, really positive night to, to see Junior back, yeah. And, of course, with regards to Junior, Adam Smith spoke in the week about how pleased he was to see him back in training. That's a boost for the squad in itself, isn't it? Yeah, of course, because it provides another tough challenge in training, for sure. Um, but I just think when, when you've got all your best players fit, sometimes injuries can be something to lean on if things aren't going well. But at the minute, you know, when you are on a good run, things do all seem to move in the right direction. It's the way it goes. You know, you have a bit of bad luck and suddenly the ball won't go in and it'll hit the post and go away. But when everything's firing and everything's going well, um, you know, players come back from injury with a bit of belief already. They're coming, they know they're coming into a squad that's going to be firing and hard to get in the team. So Junior will know he's going to have to step his, his levels up pretty quickly to get himself in the team because David Brooks is another, another hurdle in his way, if you like, this year in terms of new additions to the squad. So, yeah, I think uh, the players, of course, will know what Junior can do as well. So... Yeah, I think all round, it's uh, it's massive to have him back, particularly at you know this stage of the season where things are going well. It's a good chance to get him in when things are going well. And of course, you mentioned Mark Pugh and Tyrone Mings both getting minutes on Tuesday night. That's just more confidence for them, and hopefully they'll get another chance on Tuesday as yeah, well. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a, it's going to be a tough season for Mark Pugh, I think, in terms of um, you know the Cherries haven't got a huge squad um, of of sort of Premier League standard players. But for Mark Pugh at the moment, he's just outside the edge of it, isn't he? Um, he had a little bit of an injury setback, which won't have helped. But League Cup opportunities for people like him, he didn't play the last round because he was injured, unfortunately. So maybe he'll get his chance on, on Tuesday night against Blackburn. Um, but he, of course, he's a, he's a North West lad as well. So for him, uh, a Burnley-Blackburn doubleheader would have always carried some family interest, I'm sure. But probably unlikely he'll be involved at Burnley. But... Blackburn will be a good chance. And Tyrone Mings as well. I mean, knowing what Tyrone's like, he's an intelligent lad. He probably thought, you know, again, why wouldn't I take the chance to get some minutes? Because at the minute, apart from the League Cup, it looks unlikely he's, unless something happens and touch wood it doesn't to one of the centre halves, um, it looks like he's, he's going to struggle for minutes at the moment. So I think, you know, good on him for, for uh, taking himself out there. And Eastley, it sounds stupid, but Eastley, they're a decent side. You know, they're a, they're a National League side. Yes, they only played probably half a team and they got got pumped eight, but at the same time, it wasn't like Tyrone was going out and playing against the dog and duck, who might go in with a reckless tackle and, and cause him an injury. So, yeah, I th the likes of Pew and Mings um, and others, you know, Jack Simpson and a couple of others who have been on the on the fringe and probably will struggle for minutes. I think all, all games are, are good opportunities, yeah. Well, before we look ahead to the weekend's game against Burnley, let's take a look at what Nathan Ake had to say ahead of the game. We're back on the road this weekend, Nathan, with a trip up to, to Turf Moor to face Burnley. What, what do you kind of expect from that game? You know it's going to be a tough game travelling up to Burnley. Yeah, it's always tough. Um, every season when we go there, it's, it's tough. Last season, obviously, we ended well um, on a two-run win, but it was it was a tough game. We know how they play. Um, obviously, the, their season hasn't really kicked off yet, but the place uh, is very tough to go. So um, we know what we have to do. We've been training hard this week, and hopefully we can get a result. You look at the league table, obviously, as, as you say, Burnley have maybe struggled to, to start the season as well as they would have liked. But regardless of their form, you know, as you say, it's going to be a tough game against Burnley. Yeah, always, always. It doesn't matter who you play against. If they're in a tough run, if they're doing well, every game is always hard in the Premier League. We know that. Um, we've been there ourselves. So, um, yeah, they maybe they have even more motivation to, to get the first win. And, um, yeah, I think it's important to do what we've been doing. We've been doing really well at the start of the season, but uh, there's always things to improve. Um, but we go there with high confidence and hopefully we can get the three points. Well, that was Nathan Ake looking ahead to this weekend's game against Burnley. And Chris, they haven't had the best start to the season, have they? 
think that's an understatement. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they have won a couple of games. They beat Aberdeen in the Europa League, of course, and then Istanbul United or one of the lesser the lesser Turkish teams in the Europa League. But they've played 11 games this season. They've started in July, of course, which is, the I guess, one of the downsides of being involved in the Europa League, if there are any. Uh, and at the moment, it's fuel to the fire of anybody who suggests that getting into the Europa League for a team of Burnley or even for Bournemouth size is a bad is a bad move because you haven't got the squad to cope with it. And at the moment, Burnley's Premier League form is, is sort of ringing that true. Uh, they haven't won a game. They're stuck to the bottom. Um, I think the, the mood up there is that the transfer window was disappointing for them, given that they were going to have the extra pressure of Europe um, and the extra rotation of squads and playing Thursday, Sunday throughout the early stages of the season. Um, so, that, I mean, they signed Ben Gibson for 15 million from Middlesbrough. He's just had hernia surgery. So when your most expensive signing isn't available, that's not a great start. Matty Vidra, they paid 10 million for. He probably falls into the category of excellent championship player. Is he a Premier League player? He's hardly, he hasn't started a game for them yet. Um, only a couple of sub appearances. So that's 25 million pounds on, on they've had three or four appearances out of those two so far. Um, obviously Joe Hart in goal has found it tough at the minute. Not many teams would have three England goalkeepers in their squad, by the way, with Heaton, Nick Pope and, and Joe Hart. Um, but yeah, they just, at the moment, the, I think the disappointment out there is, is, is palpable because they had such a good year last year. Flashing in the pans, we see Leicester win the league and then, you know, it's a bit early to judge Burnley after last year, but they've had a, a really poor start. They're going to be low on confidence. Um, it looks on paper like it should be a good time to go there. And of course, now they're out of the Europa League, they'll really be looking to push on in the Premier League, which doesn't make things easy for Bournemouth. It doesn't. And home, it's an, it's an angry place, Burnley. There's a few grounds around the country that are ang I would describe as angry places. Burnley's a pretty angry place. They're right on at you if you're in a you're in a way fan there, that is for sure. Um, but of course, the confidence from the, the win up there on the last day of last season, which yeah, will be a much different occasion. No real pressure on the game. Um, sun was out for a start. It's getting a bit nippy now. It's going to be chilly up there this weekend. Um, but yeah, it's, I think the situation to that game is completely different but Burnley have always been a tough you know the, their home form has been the mainstay of their success they've always been not so successful away um, so the fact they've you know lost at home in the last game I know it was to Man United um, obviously they've had a couple of tricky games in there as well but they just haven't got it together and you just hope that if Bournemouth can go up there and start like they did against Leicester then their fans will be right on to them pretty early on and it, it, it's funny how managers drift in and out of fashion, isn't it? Because last year you're talking about Sean Dyche, why hasn't he been considered for a big job? Um, this year it will be why isn't Eddie Howe being considered for a big job? Because the results have sort of turned on their head. So, um, yeah, I think tough times at Burnley. I still think it's a good time to go there. And Eddie Howe said in his pre-match press conference that it's just Charlie Daniels and Kyle Taylor that look likely to miss the game. But it's great to go up there with a, a near fully fit squad. Yeah, uh, and again, you, talking of changes, you know, Jefferson Lerma starting to settle in well now. Diego Rico is, is impressing at left back, which when Charlie Daniels is fit, is going to make it, as we've said before, tough for him to get back in. So, yeah, for Eddie's options at the minute, you know, we saw Brooks as we thought he might come back in last week. Um, be interesting to see what, what Eddie goes with this time round. But... Uh, Adam Smith, obviously, you know, he uh, celebrated his 100th game and the, the recent arrival of his, uh, his youngster as well with that goal last week. So he's another one who's, who's flying with confidence at the moment. So not too many reasons to change, but nice to have those options available, definitely. Well, before we go any further, let's take a look at what happened last season as the Cherries travelled to Turf Moor on the final day of the campaign. Chance to deliver across. It comes in towards the. Oh, it's deflected in. Chris Wood's going to take it. It was Westwood with the initial shot, and it diverted off Chris Wood, who didn't know much about it. Completely wrong footed Begovic. And Burnley have taken the lead, and some entertainment at last here at Turf Moor, albeit not in the net we wanted. No, and again, you know, Burnley have taken the lead, and our goalkeeper has got a save to make because he was nowhere near that one. Look at the way it deflected. It just spun completely away from him. And he's on the floor. Bow territory. Still a chance. King's on side. Left side of the pedal chair. Shoots for goal. And Joshua King equalises for Bournemouth. What it, a goal that was. It puts him clear as the Cherries' top scorer with nine for the season. And Joshua King pulls Bournemouth back on terms here at Turf Moor. 1-1. Well, it took the Jermaine the Defoe to come on and hit the goalkeeper with it. You would have fancied him to score with his, probably on his first touch. But he got his foot, he got it away. But one gallant to Kingy, let one player go flying high. 
and just curled it into the top corner. Excellent stuff. Oh, a real mess, and now Jermaine Defoe's through. Chance to win it here, squares it to Callum Wilson. What a moment for him, and he does find the net. Callum Wilson, it's stoppage time at the end of the season. His long wait for a goal is over, and he's going to send Bournemouth back to the south coast with a sunny smile on their face. Callum Wilson, his teammates mob him. Delight for him and for Eddie Howe, his 100th league win as a manager. Bournemouth take a 2-1 lead. Absolutely fantastic by Callum. I've never seen so many people get up at once and are going out the stadium. I know it's, 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 it's a late goal and it's a real sickness, but they're all leaving. Well, of all the people it could have fallen to in the 95th minute of the season, ending finale. That did you mean, you know, how, how unselfish was he? He sucked the defender in. Well, we'll be hoping that the Cherries can replicate that result this time tomorrow. But of course, that's not the only game of the week. And Blackburn Rovers are our visitors here on Tuesday evening. Really good to have another home draw in the cup, isn't it? Very much so, yeah. An East Lancashire double over the, uh, the space of uh, a couple of days. Definitely nice to have Blackburn at home rather than having to, for the fans and everybody else, having to haul back up to uh, to Blackburn a few days after going to Burnley. Yeah, uh, when the draw was made, you know, you said you can't ask much more than a home draw against uh, sort of lower league opposition, if you like, particularly as the, the competition isn't seeded now. So uh, you could easily have got, a, you know, one of the big guns, for example. Um, but I think, yes, it's a, it's a favourable draw. Last round, you know, was, uh, was a was comfortable. I mean, at MK Dons, you know, Blackburn will be a, a, a next a challenge up again from them. Um, they've got a very, very good player in Bradley Dack, um, who won the League One Player of the Year last year. Uh, he is a very creative player who's made a couple of pre-season friendlies. He made Liverpool look bang average on a couple of occasions in one of their pre-season friendlies. So he's going to be the one to look out for. They're mid-table in the Championship, Blackburn. They've had an OK start, um, having come up from, from uh, League One last season. But they're a club who, again, you think of teams that have won the league and then sort of disappeared back down the footballing pyramid. They're, they're definitely a championship team. They shouldn't have been in League One for um, for the time they were. But I think they'll be. They'll certainly come here with. And for them, it's a, there's absolutely nothing to lose. Come down here and uh, and have a go. Um, and Blackburn, of course, in the League Cup, as we've mentioned before, holds good memories for Eddie Howe with uh, those who can remember his, his winning penalty up there in uh, what we know, go back 10, 12 years at least, I think maybe even 14 years, back to uh, the, the penalty shootout up at Blackburn. Uh, a famous night, Neil Moss, who uh, is on the Cherries coaching staff, was in goal that day um, as well. So, yeah, there's, there's lots of good memories of, and Eddie was sort of brought a smile to his face when we reminded him of that. So it would be nice to, uh, to complete a League Cup double over Blackburn for sure. And we talked ahead of the Cardiff game about how nice it would, see, it would be to see the Cherries get on a cup run this year. And this is a really good opportunity to, to further that. Yeah, they're obviously going to win the Hampshire Senior Cup. They're on that cup run as well. Um, no, yeah, it would be. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where home draws help, of course, um, in terms of lower league opposition as well. And you, you do need, if you're, if, I think if you're a club like Bournemouth, you need some luck in the draw. I don't think you can be drawing Liverpool, Chelsea, whatever, in the early rounds and, and think you're going to win it. That's where Bournemouth have come and start. They drew Chelsea, of course, in the quarters last year. They've had Liverpool in the quarters. If they'd have got a more favourable draw in those rounds, who knows what might have happened. So if you can avoid the big guns, um, I don't think you're going to turn in more than one amazing performance in the cup against the big guns. So, yeah, Blackburn at home, very good draw. Um, expectation, of course, is to win. And another home draw in the, nice, in the next round would be lovely as well, if they get that far, of course. <laughs> Well, that's all we've got time for today. If you are going up to Burnley, have a safe journey. And if not, join us next week as we preview the game against Crystal Palace.